I guess we're live. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are. All right. Um, well, assuming that there are people out there, hi, my name is Scott Dunbeer, and I'm joined by Kevin Nolan, um, who needs no introduction. And we are going to be talking about the new Kevin Nolan Marvel Artist Edition that'll be coming out in April. And it's already at the printer. I actually got a uh, advance unbound copy the other day. It looks really good. And so we're going to walk through it whenever Bill comes here and he starts the process. But anyway, how are you doing today, Kev? Good. Good. How about you? Good. It's, uh, it's uh, a little bit chilly in California, you know, maybe not as chilly as where you are, but, uh, you know, it's down to the low 60s. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was down to 15 last night. It's it got really cold here. So, oh, man, yeah. As as a uh, as a New Yorker, you know, I used to walk around in t-shirts when it was in the low 50s. You know, that was sort of like you know, in during winter that was warm weather, and now if it's in the 50s, I'm like, can we turn the heat on, honey? <laughs> exactly. Or just the slightest breeze, and I got to bundle up. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're gonna wait for Bill, or do you want to just start, or can well, we start without him? I, I sent him the PDFs, and I don't know how to share on the the screen. Up oh, there, he is. I'm, hey. I'm here. I'm here. So, uh, uh, sorry, I was just trying to wrap up the last panel. No but, worries, no uh, worries. But yes, I've got the PDFs for the covers and the uh, interiors. There's uh, there's the main cover PDF. There's the variants, and then I've got two different interior. PDFs to show. So um, you, got the you got the revised ones I sent you, right? I got yeah, I got the the last set that you gave me. So I will um, pull All those right. pull those up. I'm going to hide in the background, and if there, you just let me know which uh, you know when to show them and which which uh, one to show. And I'll how about it. we uh, how about we start with the uh, main cover and then the variant cover, and then we can just go into the book. You got it. I've got them all open in the uh, in the same tabs here. So I'll I'll just drop out. I'll pull it up, and uh, we'll go. All right. Thanks, Bill. Mm -hmm. And thanks for having us, too. It's my pleasure. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, all right, so here we have the uh, the cover to the book, the main cover of Kevin Nolan's Marvel Heroes Artist Edition. Uh, there is a, the main cover features an Alpha Flight cover. And then the image on the back is a detail from uh, a really cool Hulk cover that you did uh, uh, ages ago. Yeah. All right, Fred, good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Fred. <laughs> um, yeah, that we've talked about that Hulk cover before, haven't we? The uh, yeah, the we're door. actually going to see the whole thing on the inside of the book. So if you want, maybe okay. we can talk about it in there. Okay. But okay. Sounds good. Anyway, uh, yeah. Why don't we show the variant now, Bill? So there will be a signed and numbered edition of the book. Kevin's already signed the plates, and they're being bound in. Uh, and this cover features an interior page from the legendary Man-Thing graphic novel that is printed in its entirety in this book. Uh, you know, not for the first time, but for the first time where you can really kind of see it really well. But uh, yeah. anyway, you want to, uh, you want to jump into the, uh, you want to jump into the uh, regular? All right. Yeah. All right, so this is all right. So table of contents. Can we go uh, one spread, or do we have to do two at a time? Just so we can. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's better. Um. Actually, can we go back down? I'll hang, to the... I'll hang out with you guys. They'll make it easier for us to go through these. Sorry about that. No, no. Do you want me to go back to the table of contents, or do you want yeah, me to let's, start? Yeah, let's show the table of contents. Sure. 
Oh, actually, and uh, let's go to the in intro. We don't need the legal page. Just one more down. All right. And um, um, there's a really very nice and thoughtful introduction by Mike Mignola. Uh, and it, is, it is, looks like it's still in all caps. Uh, this might be a different version, but I sent you, I, I sent you the, what it looked like. So, yeah. Um, and then this is the, uh, intro by Mike. And then if we go down, this is the introduction that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is the table of contents. So there are a lot of covers as you can see, there's a bunch of pages. Um, there are, um, uh, uh, later on, you'll see there are um, uh, several complete stories as well. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I did go through the the, the PDF a bit to see what was in there. I it was it's absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to get a copy. Yeah, I I, I think people are going to like this one. If you're a fan of Kevin's work, and who the hell isn't, um, I think you'll like this. <coughs> so, are we okay to jump into the work? Yeah, it's fine with me. Um, and so, uh, uh, Kev, if there's any you want to talk about in particular or anything, you know, there, um, we start off with that's an AX cover, right? Yes. With the vision and Kitty Pride. Um, I jumped at the chance to do that because the vision was always one of my favorite Marvel characters. Since, uh, since I picked up a copy of the Avengers in 95 or something like that, back in the early 70s. Had a, had a really great little series of Rich Buckler stories before, um, it was before Barry Smith, right? Um, anyway, just, just love, love the character. I always thought he was pretty, uh, a, a cool character and fun to draw. And then the, the X Men. I don't know. It was it was an X Men cover. Um, they had different uniforms. I, I didn't color that one, but you won't see it here. But if you look at the printed version of it, somehow a large feather ended up being superimposed on I, I think the lower left corner of that, and we still haven't figured out how that happened, but. Uh, Really? Was, oh, wow. That's weird. Yeah. yeah no, I just out of nowhere, suddenly there was a feather on the cover and, and I, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move to the next one. Sure. All right. A couple of uh, early covers, Alpha Flight Annual and Alpha Flight 52. Uh, the one on the right is also, of course, the cover of the book. Right. right. And then... Yeah, I like that Wolverine a lot that you did. And I really like this, uh, the Nightcrawler on this one, too. Yeah. I'm trying to think, do you know what that was for? Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what the title that was for, but um, yeah, I like that. And it's supposed to be the Beast back there, even though he looks looks different with the, doesn't have the, the pointy peaks in his hair. Mm hmm. Right, right, right. And Look, looks, looks and almost the, uh, the defender's piece on the right was, I think, it's a commission that ended up being used for a, a tomorrow's book or magazine or something. Could be. So eventually, I got to color it, and it did see print uh, long after I drew it. Oh, thanks, Chris. Hey, you want to go down to uh, the next one? Yes, and I'll try to boost the mic on Kevin's a little bit there. I saw somebody ask. I think I can do that in, here in the studio. Okay. I'll try to speak up a little bit. One, one thing that's uh, really cool about this book and a little bit different is um, Kevin had uh, scans of a bunch of pencils, and so you'll see a number of pieces in this book will have side-by-sides. You'll have the pencils on the left and the inks on the right. Yeah, that was a, that's a Defenders cover, actually just from a few years ago, not not uh, not an old piece, uh, um, but just a few years ago. But, but 
but it's a, you know, it's got all these, you know, not just Doctor Strange, but uh, Silver Surfer and Seismig, uh, which was a thrill for me because that was a callback to the old Steve Englehart, Frank Brunner, Doctor Strange, where you would often see Neil Adams in the Krusty Bunkers um, contributing to the inks. And as a teenager reading those stories, just blew my mind and made me a, an instant Doctor Strange fan because Doctor Strange goes back through time and meets God. <laughs> and, you know, Seismic, of course, is Genesis backwards, um, you know, a fairly obvious little uh, bit there, but it was, it was a trippy book. I'm amazed that they got away with, with all of that back back then but uh it was great so yeah you know, that was a that was like a fanboy cover for me to, to get to draw not just doc but uh, seismic and the surfer i, I haven't had a chance to draw the surfer very much either mm -hmm. all right and then uh the next one so you know a couple of also a couple of vintage covers um the, the one on the right's interesting. That one actually, you didn't pencil that. That's penciled by Mignola. And then, oh, wait, did I put the wrong inker in this book? Oh, that's Mundello. Who is that? <laughs> yeah. All right, come on, fill people in. <laughs> my, my short-lived uh, short uh, Larry Mundello pseudonym. Um, I was outed by... Uh, Oh, gosh, I can't remember who it was. It was Actually, I, I can tell you who outed you. You outed you by drawing it because nobody can chip. Nobody <laughs> can. You know, that's obviously a Kevin Nolan ink job. Yeah, I, I, I soon found out that I wasn't fooling anyone. But that was sort of the thing. I didn't want to get pigeonholed as an inker, so I thought if I if I inked under a different name, then you know I wouldn't just start getting inking jobs you know i still wanted to draw i didn't want to get uh, <laughs> get uh, yeah but it didn't it obviously didn't work so 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 who outed you i'm curious i never heard that um um i'm forgetting it was it was an editor it was all i don't know well it's in the book i'll, I'll we'll, we'll come back to that because uh, the she hulk pin up where she's sunbathing that inspired you know air quotes around inspired John Byrne to do a Fantastic Four story and to do his version of that pinup. We'll 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 talk about it when we get to that because that's where I was out of when that okay. happened. Another fairly recent one. I think this is for a maybe a Doctor Strange omnibus or some kind of hardcover collection. I, I think yeah. it was an omnibus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so again, just like the Defenders cover a little bit ago, this one had all the all the classic bits. I did a, my own version of Shuma Gorath and tried to make him a little more frightening. Um, if you want to see what I was trying to avoid, that uh, that monster at the beginning of the new Doctor Strange movie, you know, big eyeball and tentacles and looks kind of goofy. That's what I was trying to avoid. Um, I was trying to make uh, Shuma Gorath look a little a little creepier, but uh, uh, Greek fist on Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, nice. Oh, thanks, Fred. So yeah, it tried to make a, a classic uh, Doctor Strange image there with as, as many of the supporting characters and and elements as I could. Yeah, I I. It's really a treat for me personally to see your pencils like this, because, you know, usually I just see your, your work finished. Right. And most of these are going to be pretty tight. I think most guys, when they ink their own pencils, they don't pencil quite as tight as this. Um, but if I'm a little uptight, a little nervous and want to make sure that, you know, I don't have to make corrections with white out or, or fix something in the inks, I'll I'll generally pencil fairly tight if there's if there's enough time in the schedule. All right. You want to move to the next one, Bill? A couple more Doctor Strange pieces, a couple of covers. Yeah. Fairly recent. Uh, yeah. A few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
All right. And uh, the one on the left, um, yeah, I, I signed it uh, after Gil Kane because the layout is very similar to a Green Lantern cover that, uh, that Gil did. Um, and that's kind of a classic Gil thing, you know, to, <laughs> to frame the main character, you know, looking between the legs of another one. Uh, and then again, you know, a newer Doctor Strange cover where he's got a different costume, not the classic costume, but he's fighting uh, Baron Mordo uh, above the roof, above Greenwich Village and uh, the classic building down below. So, yeah, those were fun. Uh, yeah. Well, now, what's this one on the left? Was that a, was that a Doctor Strange cover? Because, I mean... That's a lot of room uh, that uh, that's going to be covered up by the logo. Yes, I'm trying to remember how they how they squeezed the logo in there. They did they did it really well, um, but I don't remember exactly where they put it. Again, I'm you know big uh, Dormammu and uh, Nightmare and all you know a, another Shumagora again trying to make him look as creepy as possible. Um, you know, a whole bunch of supporting characters back there. Um, yeah, I sorry, I don't don't remember exactly what that was for, but, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it is one I really like. I, I do remember they, yeah, the, the I guess the bonus from getting the artist edition here is they did have me uh, cover up the cleavage on Satana. Is that her name with the horns? Um, you're seeing more of her there than you see in the printed version of the Marvel cover because they, they thought it was a bit too revealing. But, um. I really like the, um, on the other cover, the candlestick and the, uh, the thing holding the orb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Just kind of some improvised goo or uh, demonic looking stuff. Holding up the orb. Yeah. All right. I really like this uh, this Hulk drawing, and I really, it's what's really fun is to me looking at the pencils and looking at the inks, you know, seeing the difference in the Hulk logo that you that you hand drew. You know, oh, I mean, you're right. You're right. I, it was, it was. A, it, I don't think that. Uh, I don't think Marvel asked me to do that. I just thought it looked it, it, it's a little hard to read the logo uh, in the pencils. Um, you know, the H is kind of broken apart. The U and the L kind of, yeah, aren't, aren't very clear. So yeah, I just, uh, I tried to, tried to make it a little more legible. That was a variant cover for Declan Shalvey's, uh, one shot for Immortal Hulk. Nice. All right. Now, this is really interesting to me because you have on the left, you know, your older style and on the right, a, a newer style. And, you know, just having them side by side just really works really well for me. You know, it, it's um, obviously a much simpler, well, deceptively more simple style on the right. Um, the one on the left is really nice, but I prefer the one on the right personally. Um, and actually, um, there's a there's sort of a funny story about the one on the right. Kev, maybe uh, you could. Yeah. Uh... yeah. yeah. Um, before I, I tell the story, the, the one on the left, I, I agree with you. It's it's not a very good Hulk, but uh, Dragon Man. You could try Dragon, that, was, yeah. that was like my first. I think that was eighty three. So I was just brand new to comics. And you can tell that my focus was completely on drawing Dragon Man sure. and uh, paid very little attention to the Hulk. I didn't really know what to do with the Hulk at that point. Um, the one on the right was, let's say, around 87, 88. And I was, if you see other stuff that I did at that time, like the uh, little, little bit after that, I did the. Uh, the man bat secret origin story. And I was, I was trying to pare down my style. Um, 
and not uh, depend so much on fussy rendering and things like that and, and, and work on structure and, and make the basic drawings better instead of uh, focusing on rendering and, and the way I finish things. So the earlier version of this was <coughs> rejected by Marvel and the editor was apologetic, but he said uh, they were going to reject. It. I said, was it the rendering? He said, yeah. And I said, how you know, give, give me another chance. Let me, I'll do the same cover, but I'll put in more traditional rendering and see if that works for you. And I did. They liked it. They accepted it then. But I, I found out years later, I hope it's okay to, to name names, but, but Chiarello, who was working in the bullpen, Mark Chiarello was working at the Marvel bullpen uh, at that time. And years later, when he was uh, art director at DC, he said that when that cover came in, <laughs> John Romita Sr. held it up and he said, this is what is wrong with comics today. <laughs> um so it wasn't one of his favorite covers but uh, uh you you're uh, you're in good company uh with uh alan weiss but anyway um oh he, yeah we don't need to get into that here but you'll, you'll have to tell me about oh oh the the captain america story yes where he where he was uh redrawing all of the captain america faces actually i was gonna alan talk i was no, it's the other story, that one too, but oh. the one about um, uh, when Alan brought in that uh, mermaid splash page. Yeah, what happened? Oh, oh, the story about, you You know, you're a hippie, that kind of thing, you know? How, yeah. <laughs> how dare you bring this up here? You, you guys are just hippies. You don't need to feed a family, that kind of thing. Is that the story? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, this is save it for now. another time. But now, now, what's really interesting about this cover on the right, and by the way, I love this cover on the right so much. And my favorite part, though, is the skull. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's I, I really cartoony. Little, it's such a little yeah. throwaway thing. But, um, yeah. but what's interesting <laughs> about this cover is, um, you, you know, you said you redrew it. Um, when I was in at New York Comic Con um, a month ago, um, a friend of mine brought in some art for me to scan a bunch of different things. And one of the things he brought was the other version of this cover, which is, I swear to God, almost identical to this piece. There are actually three. So there's the first one that was too simple <laughs> to model. Bless you. There was my first attempt at adding rendering. I had a new tool at that time, which was an electric eraser. And I didn't realize how powerful those things are. I tried to correct, uh, take off some ink in one place, make a correction, went right through the Bristol, went right through okay. both, both layers of the Bristol. And the thing was nearly finished. So again, I light boxed it on a clean sheet of paper, started over again and did the, the cover that was printed. But then that one that had a hole in it, Eventually, I thought, you know, it's just a little like a quarter of an inch hole in the paper. I, I you know, figured out a way to patch it. And uh, so, yeah, there's there's actually three of those, which, you know. I, and they all look pretty much the same. Well, this, the second and third definitely look a lot alike. Right. Um, the first one is, is rendered in a different way. But, yeah, they're, they're pretty much the same layout on all three. Same, I'd like to see the of drawing. What's right. that? I, I said I'd like to see the uh, the third one at some point. But anyway. uh, yeah, it'd be fun to get them all three together. Okay. All right, now the uh, Moon Knight cover was the cover to 200, um, and that's also just a few years ago. The one on the right was part of the Epic line, and this goes back, this is probably the late 80s, early 90s? Yes, uh, late 80s. I, I think I remember where I was when I did it, so it would have been around 87 or 88. Um, the not, what, I, what makes me so happy about this little painting, uh, the one on the right, is that's the way I painted it, and then, again, editorial interference, they came back and said, we really have to have this character's goofy goggles mask on here. We, 
you know, uh, and so I did a, I did an awkward patch. Um, and that's the way it was printed to see that whoever owns this um, was able to remove the patch and uh, apparently didn't do any damage to the painting underneath. This is, this is how it was done originally. So I, that makes me very happy. Um, the Moon Knight cover on the left made me happy for a couple of reasons. One is I, you know, I did a few issues of Moon Knight when I was just starting in comics, but I never had a chance to do any of the covers. So that's, I think, the only Moon Knight cover I've done. Um, and if you look at what you were talking about, uh, our poor old dog here on the floor beside me this afternoon, uh, if you look close at that one billboard, that's, uh, that's him. It says shave. Oh, and it, yeah, uh, I didn't notice that. big wide eyed cool. Yeah, yeah. And, so and now, and now, what's the other billboard? Uh, just, just made up nonsense. Uh, like a, it's like a, a, a chef uh, wearing uh, a toque, and uh, I don't know, trying to sell you some, 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 uh, some awful Italian food or something. So yeah, just actually, <laughs> you know, I, I, I actually researched. That's those, I believe, are real. Uh, God, what did what did it take place? Uh, uh, real buildings in New York, not made up buildings, the way I used to draw them uh, when I was penciling Moon Knight. Um, they're they're referenced, and you know all the all the dang fire escapes and all that stuff. It took for, took forever to do that uh, that background. But, Great uh, perspective. Do, do uh, you remember the um, Do you remember that Brian Boland uh, Superman cover with the fire escape? Um, is it this, is it Superman looking kind of monstrous, like kind of yeah. a lizard creature? Yes. Yeah. And they and they actually printed it in black and white, which was very unusual. And you know, when I first saw the printed book, I thought it was just gorgeous that cover. And I thought, you know, it's weird. He actually used a photo in the background. He actually statted it. And then I got the original, and because I used to sell Brian's work, and it was all hand drawn. It was hand drawn. <laughs> ever. But. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing looking. It's a, it's a beautiful cover. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, thanks, Max. All right. So new yeah. cover on the left, vintage cover on the right. Yeah, newish on the left. That might be 10 years old by now or eight years old, but it was, uh, I think it was a what if special. So that's supposed to be Daredevil or Matt Murdock, Asian of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the in the foreground there. I just thought it was funny to have a, a blind guy with a gun, like, oh, you're not really going to shoot that thing, are you? <laughs> um, and the two Nick Furies uh, and Black Widow. Yeah. Um, and then the yeah. Avengers cover. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. That's an old one. But more old ones. Yeah, I, I really yeah. like your run on Strange Tales. You did some really nice covers on them. Thanks. Yeah. Um, again, that was that sort of felt like redemption to me because my first job at Marvel was penciling a fill-in issue of Doctor Strange, but I hadn't. I was so new to comics. Everything, everything was a challenge. Um, but a few years later, for these covers. I'd figured out a few things and it was great to get a, another shot at drawing Dr. Strange and see if I could do a, a better job than I had on that first story. Um, plus these were all, uh, Carl Potts was the editor and uh, I loved working with Carl. He was, he was very supportive, gave me, you know, he was always giving me interesting things to work on. Um, the logos, I didn't do the Cloak and Dagger logo, but the other logo, Strange Tales and the Doctor Strange logo, those are my designs. Um, and I think, I don't remember which one, but um, at a certain point um, doing these covers, I asked him if I could do my own coloring and he was he was agreeable to that as well. I, I felt like that made a big difference, especially the one on the left. You know, because they really gave it so that big monster guy gave him some really creepy coloring, um, and I, 
I felt like the drawings just looked better with uh, with my coloring on them as well. Actually, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the Doctor Strange logo and the Strange Tales logo, because mm -hmm. obviously you have an affinity for doing logos. Um, uh, for people who don't know, uh, Kevin designed the Hellboy logo. And so... Not really. I always have to... I, I got to correct. Because it's... You know, Mignola did a sketch. So it's really not my design. I'm more like the Hellboy logo inker. Yeah, but you, you were... I ended up drawing... Yeah, I did the finished drawing. But what... You know, I, I finally <laughs> went back and looked at the sketch that he sent me. And pretty much everything is there. It's just not... It's not a, uh, a finished piece. So he's he's been more than generous with the credits you know, crediting me with that. Um, but it's, yeah, it really isn't my design. So. And then also, I mean, you know, Mike, as you said, is very generous and, you know, I mean, the royalties that he's paid you on that logo is, I mean, they paid for <laughs> you, right? Yes. <laughs> he's, he is very generous, but no, that's yes. the logo. I don't know of any logo designs that pay uh Pay royalties. If I if if they were, I'd be wealthy just from the Punisher logo. Oh, I forgot but, about that. Yeah. Yeah, they're all they're all buyouts. You get paid once, and that's it. Yeah. All right. Let's go down to the next. Oh, thanks, Scott. Scott Reno. All right, right. Uh, another Strange Tales cover, and then a different Doctor Strange. If if it seems like you know, if people are wondering what you know the the order of the covers. Uh, they're alphabetical to the title of the book. So that's, that's oh, what, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah. The, the one on the left, the, uh, the strange tales. Um, again, I was saying that Carl Potts, you know, was, was giving me all kinds of fun assignments. He had me ink this, the, uh, the story, the cloak and dagger story inside that book as well who penciled uh, it forgive me i forgot the penciler's name um and then uh it was, it was written by terry austin who uh, oh wow cool taking a turn as a writer um, and terry had a hand in discovering you right it, he did yeah he he took in samples of my work just you know out of the out of the goodness of his heart he, he knew that i was a struggling uh uh Unemployed, not unemployed. I had a day job, but doing pay stuff and design work. No, no, uh, wasn't getting any comics work until Terry took in some samples of my work and and got me that first uh, fill in issue of Doctor Strange. Nice. Um, okay. It's, unless you want to talk about the other one, we can move on. No, I think that's that's it's yeah. I don't have anything to add to it. So, okay. uh, a couple of uh, really interesting and different stylistically. Wolverine pieces. The one on the left is a back cover. Uh, the one on the right is a front cover. And, um, you know, I really like the, uh, well, I like them both a lot, but you know, it's, it's interesting. Did you get any blowback on the, uh, on that cover on the left? Just wondering because of the subject matter. I mean, you know, Wolverine is, you know, obviously eating a bird, which, you know, we all do, but yeah. usually you're not, they don't still have feathers on them. <laughs> Yeah, we don't usually kill it and eat it uh, raw or, you know, eat it live. Um, no, Mar I, Marvel seemed fine with it. And one guy, I remember one guy in a comic shop gave me a hard time about it. I said, he's eating a bird, you know? What, what, where's the crime in that? A um, actually, go ahead. Uh, remind me, I'll tell you a funny story before we leave this cover in a minute. But go no, ahead. I, think, I think I'm done. I think that's it. Did, did you color this cover yourself? I did, but there was either a mistake in the coding or a mistake in the separations because it didn't turn out the way I intended it to. Oh, wow. But I did a guide and, and coded it. I think it, 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 part of it came out really pink, and that wasn't the color that I had picked. Yeah. No, I, I really, uh, I really dig uh, both of these, but the one on the left is really exceptional. But I was going to tell you a funny story. <coughs> um, so Brian Boland did a cover, an animal, animal man painted cover uh, with a lobster on it. And actually, um, his wife, Rachel, is a 
very, very talented artist. She actually painted a lot of that and she helped him on some of those Animal Man covers. But in that particular piece, in the letters page, there's a disclaimer because, you know, or when that when the letters in a future issue came out, it said something about, uh, you know, the cruelty to animals, you know, in the, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the editor wrote, well, just so you know, no animals were harmed during the production of this book. And I was talking to Brian and I mentioned that to him. I was laughing about it. And he went, and Brian's very, you know, very proper English gentleman with a wry sense of humor. And he says, well, that's not entirely true. <laughs> I, I, went down, I went down to the local market and I bought a live lobster and I had them kill it so I could paint it. <laughs> I asked him if he oh. ate it and he said, oh, no, no. After three days, we threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, guests and model lobsters stink after three uh, days. Yeah. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. All right, a couple more. Right. Here you see that, that pared down inking approach that I was talking about earlier. Uh, Is this around the time of the New Mutants book, or maybe a little bit, uh, little yeah, bit around the time? I don't know. I don't know which would have come first, but around the time of that, yeah, um, yeah. maybe a little before the uh, the Man Bat Secret Origin story. Actually, hold on one um, second. Hey, Bill, are, do we have a hard uh, end at one o'clock? Um, well, I would. I have to leave at one o'clock. I can tell you that because I have to host the next panel. But okay. I can work it out where I can have someone in here with you who can let you guys run long and uh, and you know manage things for you if you wanted to go over your hour. I mean, you know, we're, we are going kind of slow, but I I I I think people I hope people would be interested in uh, it continuing. Kevin, do you have any time, or should we speed things up? Um, yeah, we can speed things up, but I but I have some time. I think if we want to go a little bit over, that's fine. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. And then let's go to the next one. Now, this was a commission, right, Kev? Um, yeah. You, you've you been calling these commissions. They were basically drawn just for the fun of it. So, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really a commission. It was, uh, it was, you know, me drawing stuff that I rarely get asked to do. Um, or, or you know, got a hole in my schedule and need to need to fill in or something, and cool. And uh, yeah. All right, and another uh, another example of your pencils as well. And it's interesting right. to see that you really had fun with the rocks in the background. You know, you just sort of sketched it out and then um, did everything. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. You. You said. Yeah. That's the right word. Fun. <laughs> it is yeah. fun to see those. I, I just have a vague idea, but then I oh, a lot of times it's just a dry brush, and uh, and you know hopefully the happy little accidents will will work in your favor. If not, you just you know add more black. <laughs> All right, and let's go to the next one. Yeah, I think you told me you didn't like the beast. Is that right? Because I really like it. Oh, I thought you told me you didn't like it. No, I like it. <laughs> no, no, I do. I do like it. I really like um, the Dare I really like the Daredevil too, especially um, the four goons on the bottom. They're great. <laughs> yeah, those those guys showed up in a couple of DC. Uh, like I did a, a Superman nineteen a 1938 Superman cover, and those very similar uh, uh, goons show up on that with the with the fedoras and everything. Um, yeah, that was a commission. The Daredevil was a commission, I think. Um, he specifically asked for the uh, the original Daredevil costume. Was that um, I think Eric has that right? Am I wrong? Um, that's not who I did it for originally, but he might have it now. I think it's I think it's passed through a few hands since I originally did it. I could I could totally be wrong, but anyway, okay, let's go to the next yeah. one. And and Kev, if I'm going too fast, if there's anything you want to no. talk about, you know, yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're fine. Uh, some of these I don't have much to say about, so you, you know, it's fine to just keep on going. But uh, yeah. like these two, I don't really, 
Um, the one on the left, I think, was done for uh, uh, like a charity auction, maybe. And I, I remember drawing <coughs> one on the right, but I'm not sure what it was for. So, um, yeah, just people, to, people who buy the book can check the table of contents. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay. Uh, another Hulk, and then a really cool. Uh, Dr. Strange in color. Was this done for the uh, Ed Asner charity? Or am I wrong about that? No, it was not. It was not. It was a few years ago, and I don't actually remember what it was done for. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. And uh, then if we go on to the next one. All right, now we get to some... Um, men thing stuff. Uh, the the three panels on the left are a patch that was done, and then the uh, images on the right are slightly reduced layouts from the man thing graphic novel. And then, if you go to the next one, you'll see that there are uh, two more pages with uh, man thing layouts um i love the one uh, on the top right and you know all these are a lot of fun and what's really cool is you know looking at the way you know the the bottom two on the right where they have patches that you looks like maybe you added vellum to it um but uh you know th these are always a lot of fun to see yeah you can kind of see the you can see the thought process a lot when uh, when you look at the layouts and see how things change for the uh, for the final art, yeah, or the the lettering on that uh, that one on the bottom right. See, because uh, the gun sound effect was so important, I wanted to to design that as part of the page. Yeah, at that stage. But, uh, all right, let's go to the next one. Okay, and this is the. Uh the pinup for Marvel fanfare that you were talking about, you know, fairly early uh, in your career, you wanted to talk about this one a bit. Yes. So um, it, it, again, I, I was brand new to comics. Was this 83 or close to 1980? It was probably about 83, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Al Milgram, who, who gave me my, first job in comics and took a took a chance on a guy who'd never even drawn a comic story before and let me do a that fill in issue of Doctor Strange. Um, he was editing Marvel Fanfare and just said, you know, they, they, they had a lot of uh, portfolios in there. So it'd be maybe six pages of just pinups like this. Um, pretty much just gave me carte blanche, whatever you want to do. Um, so I did a bunch of, uh, you know, kind of pinups with uh, female Marvel characters. This one I thought was funny. And, of course, you don't get the joke looking at the black and white artwork because the joke is she's she's sunbathing, but it's She-Hulk. So she has, a, you know, she has a green suntan and a uh, uh, tan lines on her back. Uh, that's the that's the joke. But that inspired um, John Byrne to do a splash page and maybe the entire story, uh, an issue of the Fantastic Four. Um, so it was strange seeing his version of this, of this same shot. But Mike Carlin was the editor and he called me up and he said, okay, here's the deal. Um, your fanfare uh, portfolio, pinups, that, that issue hasn't been published yet, but John Byrne, I was inspired to do his version of that for the splash page of this new issue of the Fantastic Four. That will actually come out before your Marvel <laughs> fanfare. And I said, you know, I, I, I whined to my car. I said, I'm going to look like I'm stealing from John Byrne. That's not, he's, well, if anybody's stealing. I, I always thought that you swiped this from John. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I didn't think that. I, by the way, I wouldn't be surprised if many that. people would have thought that. But to, to his credit, Mike Carlin said that, you know, Calm down. We'll put a note on Kevin's <coughs> flash, and he did. Um, it says like a tip of the hat to Kevin Dolan, yeah, etc. Oh, but then I think was it there, or or maybe on the letters page of that issue, he said, "AKA 
Larry Mondello. So my my uh, short lived uh, ghost name for <laughs> inking was was revealed. That's funny. You know, th there was. I'm not going to mention the artist involved, but there was there's an artist who did um, who did a series and another artist got photocopies of the work that he was doing and the other artist swiped and it came out before the first artist. The, the first artist wasn't very happy. <laughs> I, I, I feel for that artist because like you said, I was angry even before it happened. It, it was, you know, my situation was resolved very nicely, but it can happen um, and it, it's compounding the crime essentially by, you know, making it look like the guy, the, the swipe E is the swiper or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, the Val Valkyrie piece, I think it was just, a, I think it might've been a commission, but again, it was, that was several years ago. I don't, I don't remember exactly. All right. And then let's go to the next one. Oh, this is the one you said you didn't like the Wolverine one. I yeah. like it. Okay. It's, it's, you can tell by the signature. It's a really old piece. Again, probably 83, 84, something like that. I, I just, it's not, it's not my favorite Wolverine drawing. You know, know what though? It's, see, okay. see, let me just, let me just tell you why I like it. I mean, you know, it's not your best work in the book, but I really like the pose and, you know, it just, it just, you know, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like it gives the impression that there are better things to come, you know, because it really <laughs> is, it make, no, seriously, it's, and I'm not saying okay. that as a diss on this, I really like this, but, you know, it's obviously simple. It's not, you know, something that you spend a lot of time on, but I, I just like the composition of it. And then, okay. uh, and then on the right, uh, this was also reduced in size, and you inked this over Joe Casada, uh, and you Joe wrote the story. And uh, did you, I can't tell from it. Did you letter this one yourself too? Yeah, he he specifically asked me to to do hand lettering on it, so that was fun. Except the the uh, the title took forever because it's uh, you know it's a takeoff on the Daredevil logo, um, and I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, maybe just because I was doing it right on the board, so I had to, you know, I had to draw it out very, very carefully before I inked it. But I remember that. Well, I think the whole page, because <laughs> it was done pretty much poster size, took a long time to ink that page. Um, got some really, really fine details. Joe, at this point, is, is uh, penciling very, very tight, and uh, it's, it's a really the backgrounds nice are just loaded with with details. Yeah. All right. Yeah. A couple yeah. pages from a fairly recent, I don't know how many years ago this was, maybe five years ago, something like that. Um, a short Doctor Strange story, um, which, you know, one of the few where there was enough time for me to do pencils, inks, and coloring. Um, and that was fun. It's always it's always a treat when you get to draw a superhero vomiting <laughs> the trash dumpster. That that, that was on your bucket list, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, so I got to scratch that off. But uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. And this is a spread. Yeah, I Another one, not the same story. This is a, a, a bit later, a few years later. And this one, there was not enough time. Uh, someone else did the coloring and I was only able to ink a few of the pages. Other, other people inked uh, uh, most of the pages in this story, which, is, which really broke my heart because it was, it was a story that was tailor-made for me or you know, my interests or whatever. It had it had the classic Doctor Strange. So we're going back to the old 70s or late 60s costume. And um, and he's essentially fighting like uh, universal monsters, werewolves and, and 
and uh, Frankenstein and stuff like that. So if there had been enough time, it really would have been a, a, a better story, but it had to, it had to be rushed and it was, uh, it, it ended up looking pretty watered down, but this is, this is the double page spread that I did. I did get to ink at least. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. A couple more Doctor Strange pages. Yeah. I really like the, the right also. Just you know, I just love your your background characters have such personality. <laughs> They're anachronistic because if I draw these, you know, just casual people going by in New York City, you know, I'm drawing guys from the 30s and 40s, not the, not right. the uh, the 20s. You know, they right. got. Uh, by the way, um, if you look on the page on the right, the third panel, the woman there, I swear to God, yeah. that looks like an old picture of Christine Mignola. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's supposed to be clear with, you know, I, I made some alterations. I didn't do the crazy Ditko hairdo, um, but yeah, it's, that's. Again, that, that and the double page spread are, are two of the pages I really, or three of the pages I really like out of, out of that one story. And then on the first page, the fourth panel, you know, the, the work on that is just phenomenal. Thank you. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> uh, okay, I love these two pages. This is from a Mark Wade story, right? Um, it is. Yeah, it's a, essentially a retelling of... Uh, of his origin, again, uh, it suffered the fate of uh, many of these, where the the schedule did not allow me to do it. Uh, the, the The first few pages are, I think, the the better of the. And again, just beautiful lettering. I and that see these are scanned from the boards where I had penciled in the lettering, but then someone else lettered it digitally. Someone really? colored it, so I. I you went ahead and, and, and finished inking the lettering uh, oh, no. after the fact. So, yeah, it is my lettering, but it's different from how, the way it, it appeared in print. Nice. It's just, you know, lettering is so important to me. It, you know, it may be a terrific letterer working with me. It's just not the same. It steals some of my enthusiasm, and I, I, don't, I don't like giving up even that... Uh, that job when I when I do comics, I, I greatly prefer to do all the hand lettering on the board and color it myself. Um, and and you've actually lettered jobs by other artists, like you lettered all of almost all of Moonshadow, right? No, not Moonshadow. Right. Was yeah, it Moonshadow? Moonshadow. Okay, Moonshadow. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know that lettering was great, um, but. Uh, you know, I, I miss I miss hand lettering on stuff. I mean, you know, looking at, you know, like the the few EC stories that Wally Wood lettered himself. Oh my God, they oh, were just, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Anyway, all right, let's go on to the next one. All right. Hey, Bill. hey, hey I am uh, going to turn this over to uh, to Gwen to manage my daughter. She will be uh, scrolling through it. You just give her a next if she doesn't do it as prompt as uh, as I've been. But you know what? She's actually been running the show for the last fifteen minutes, so. Um, I do have to go over to my other panel, but Kevin, thank you so much for doing this. You guys can run as long as you like. The, the panels are not tied together. They're separate. So feel free to take as much time as you like. And, and you know, again, I really appreciate uh, you taking the time out this afternoon, Kevin, to do this. And Scott, again, you've done these for us so many times in the past. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. And, um, you know, thanks for hosting us. And Gwen, make sure you put in for uh, overtime. <laughs> Yeah, I was just talking well, to her say, about, uh, about payment yeah. for this weekend. But thank you. She'll <laughs> she'll be she'll be doing a fine job for you. I'm sure she will. All right, great. Thank you. You got it. That's my way. Okay. All right. We probably only have like me and you and Gwen here now at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I always like this stuff. So now here's something interesting because this is from that. Um, it was like a giant size X Men tribute book. For some reason, I th and maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but I thought you were also kind of not crazy about this page too. I really like this page. Um, I mean, especially no, I, left panel. I don't. No, I like I like the page as well. Um, I, it, yeah, the book is a 
sort of a tribute to Dave Cockrum. So I, I hesitated to make too many changes, but the one big change I made was he, he violated the 180 degree rule. So he had a nightcrawler running in the opposite direction. And so I, I made that one little change and had him um, running left to right. Um, but no, I, I like the page. Yeah. yeah, me too. And then over here, we're getting into some really old territory. Uh, that's one of your first, yes. uh, one of your first jobs from Moon Knight. Right, right. One of the first times I got to ink any interior work. Um, yeah. All right, let's yeah. go to the next one. We'll, we'll see a few more uh, Moon Knight pages here. Okay. Yes. It's interesting, wow. very, uh, very, uh, um, very specific early stuff. And now which pages, now some, some pages were inked by Carl Potts and then some were inked by, by yourself, by you. Did, can you point out the ones that Carl yeah. the ones that you inked? Yeah, Carl inked the one on the left, um, but I liked his inks. Um, yeah. They were loose, but he, you know, Carl's an artist, so he, he understood the values. And and it, uh, and it fit your style at the time. Yes, yes. I think the one on the right, and it's not that good. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are my inks. Okay, let's go to the next one. I inked the one on the left. Um, and the one on the right was inked by Carl? I think so. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't swear that that's true. There were, there were often groups of inkers finishing up those pages because I was so late. So it, it might be Carl. It might be someone else. I don't know. Right. Um, and they let you know. I'd, I'd, I'd uh, penciled in that title, and they, they inked it. Whoever inked it inked the, uh, the lettering as well. Right. By the way, um, just so people know. Um, it looks like there's a glitch on the right PDF, but that's not in the book. Anyway, okay. Okay. Let's go to the next one. One on the left, you yeah. inked yourself, right? And maybe the right no, also? No, I didn't ink. I did not ink any of these. These are all Carl's inks. Boy, they're um, nice. Yeah, they really are. Uh, you know, Terry inked the, the, the first issue that I did, and I like his inking a lot, but um, Carl's stuff surprised me. When I first saw it, I, I, I thought they'd sent me copies of the, uh, of the pencils because they were so faithful to what I'd, uh, what I'd penciled. And it's a nice sequence here. A friend of mine owns these pages, and he's, you know, even though we don't see Moon Knight, um, he loved this kind of self-contained uh, little sequence here. Sure. Um, okay. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. On the left, we have the final Moon Knight page. And then on the right, we have the first of a number of pages from New Mutants. Right. The notorious uh, New Mutants fill in. Yeah. Which uh, um, was not the most well received story Marvel did that year. No. I loved no. it. <laughs> well, if you if you Google uh, Kevin Nolan hate mail, <laughs> you'll see you'll see a lot of the uh, scans of the, the letters that uh, the Marvel forwarded to me. And then I I heard years later that uh, at least one person ripped up a copy of the magazine and mailed it back to Marvel. So it inspired a lot of in, <laughs> a lot of reactions. In fairness, I've always regretted doing that. It's okay. I'm over it. It's all right. But uh, <laughs> you know, honestly though, you know, seriously, if I was your editor on that book, I would not have forwarded you that mail. <laughs> well, I guess I, they no, I asked for it. Yeah, they 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 were <laughs> I, I asked about it and they said, you know, yeah, we'll send it to you if you'd like. And I said, yeah, I'd love to love to see what people have to say. So I, yeah, it's, it's my fault. 
<laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. There's the uh, spread from this issue. Right. I mean, this is just great. I mean, you know, this is just such beautiful stuff. I love the dry brush on the left, and I love the depth of it on the right, you know, just – and the storytelling, you know, where the, I mean, it's, it's a double page spread. So it's not like traditionally like, you know, major storytelling, but just as the characters come in from the left and get smaller and go in and then all the characters there in that cavernous place, whatever the hell it is, you know, I love that. Uh, thanks. Good. Yeah. I, I, I've mentioned many times that, that um, to counter the negative reaction that I got from the New Mutants readers, um, whoever was buying my artwork at the time, sold the entire story. I think uh, Mignola and Arthur Adams split up the pages. So I felt it's like, well, I you know, <laughs> sorry, I don't care what these teenagers think of my work. If two artists I I really respect thought enough to to buy all of these, then then it must not be uh, too bad. So. Yeah, and uh, let's go to the next one. So we have, I think we have 11 pages from the story in here. Oh, wow. wow. And, you know, just beautiful stuff. You know, again, just beautiful, beautiful work. But Yeah, anyway. I like the page on the right. I like those uh, little slivers. of uh, In the middle? You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah or yeah, that yeah. last panel, that, that, you know, that big, you know, big dramatic yeah. shot or little dramatic shot at the bottom. I like that too. And also, you know, I love the way, you know, you could have just blacked in that, that top of that panel, the roof again, uh, where they are, but, but, you know, you did a really cool um, bit of, of architecture there. All right, let's go to the yeah. next. Okay. Can we move to the next one, Gwen? All right, thank you. Um, yeah, just more. And, and the one on the right has uh, um, uh, Mike Mignola's favorite character in here, who he calls the skunk girl. Yes. I think he actually, I, he, I think he actually re refers to her as skunk girl in the introduction. And when I got it, I, I, uh, corrected and he goes no 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 call it a skunk girl and, <laughs> and, and, and luckily you know and I, I sent it to marvel and i pointed that out and you know they were totally fine with that so <laughs> that's great that's great and yeah once people read mike's introduction and and they read what he said about my drawing of skunk girl i'll let, I'll let that stand on its own but that middle shot, the close sh shot of her in the middle of the right-hand page, it's, it's very little there, but it's, it is one of my favorites in the whole, in the whole book. I, I, they let me get away with, with murder on this book because that's not the way, she, she's way off model. I mean, she's not wearing the, the proper clothes that, um, that mohawk hairstyle is not what she is supposed to be wearing. It's all, you know, it's it's all me just taking advantage of their uh, of whatever freedom they gave me. And well, uh, let, let's specifically call out the editor Anna Senti because she, you yeah. know, is fantastic. Yes, and she deserves a lot of the credit. I, I think, and, and to be fair, Shooter as well. Shooter was very very supportive and said later that she came very close to calling me up and reining me in and she she hesitated and decided to just let me go, go with it but That's shooter awesome. shooter was very very supportive so um i i would you know i'm i'm very happy about both of them doing that because it was it was it was i was taking some chances that's for sure cool all right let's go to the next one Yeah. A couple more nice pages. You know, I love the pouting lips on the middle and the right. Well, and and on the left, you see that I'm, uh, you know, living dangerously, drawing unattractive faces. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a book about some 
teenage superheroes. I did want them to have very distinct features and not look like cookie cutters. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go on to the next. Yeah. Again, just to it's really... hard to draw people. That first panel on the left, it's hard to draw people floating in space with no gravity. Um, it's not uh, it's not that effective, but that was that was one of the biggest challenges. But uh, you know, one one silly observation: um, a lot of artists who aren't quite used to well, not about floating, but you know, a lot of times you'll see people who don't overlap figures. So it's nice to see figures overlapping. You know, I mean. A lot of artists will sometimes just have, you know, this figure here, this figure here, this figure here. And even if they're in cramped close quarters, they want to draw the entire figure. But anyway, minor yeah. observation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next. Okay. Here's a page, uh, one of three in the book, I think, that you did not pencil. This is by David Ross. Uh, from Punisher number seven, maybe. Um, but I really liked uh, what you did on him for this issue. That was a really memorable one. And um, you inked the cover of this over Mignola, I think. Is that right? Right, right. Yeah. I think this was the first time I had inked anyone else on a, on a story, on interior work. I'd inked a few covers that were penciled by other people. I, I think this is the first time I penciled someone else's or ink someone else's pencils. And again, I I, I, I should have I should have been reined in because I really did uh, kind of go overboard and almost treated Dave's finished pencils as layouts. Um, I can't remember. Somebody swiped, well, another artist swiped that uh, bottom panel, that that dramatic close-up of the Punisher. Someone else is at least one person has swiped that. So that's always a. <laughs> I take that as a compliment if another artist says, "Yeah, I'll I'll do my version of that drawing." So. All right, and now we're getting to the complete story section. So let's uh, go to the next one. Um. All right. So. Is this the first page? No. Actually. We should have, uh, yeah, go. Uh, let's go to the beginning, or I'm sorry, the end of the first PDF. That's the second one. Apologies. I have, like, no idea where it went. Huh. Do you have the, uh, you know, we can just start in the uh, second PDF at the beginning. It's okay. We, I mean, there's only, th I think, two pages we're missing. So go all the way to the front on that one. Okay. So this is the uh, third page, I think, right? Uh, I think it's the second page. Yeah, it's page two. Oh, right, right, right. That's, the, uh, so yeah. um, the splash page is also in here, but that's in the uh, first PDF. Um, what's, what's really cool is Kevin again had scans of the pencils of this entire story. Uh, and so I decided to print the entire story left to right pencils ink. So it's a 10 page okay. story. But it's actually taking up 20 pages. And what's really neat about this to me is that you penciled in the lettering and then you can see the lettering on the, uh, um, on the right. And, you know, all these crazy characters, you know, I mean, I really like them, but you know, in in some ways, I actually that character on the bottom, I prefer him in the pencils to the inks. I mean, the, the inks are great, but yeah. man, he's so <laughs> so great there, and that guy with his hand over his head. <laughs> yeah, great. and then the guy in between them, I totally redrew. I wasn't happy with the way the pencils look, so he's he's totally redrawn in the inks. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't um, notice that. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. All right, let's go to and the, the crows. Uh, um, it, it's not giving away too much to say that the bad guy in this story is the Marvel version of the Scarecrow. Marvel and DC both have Scarecrow characters. And so the writer who, uh, I think this was his first Marvel script, 
Yeah. Um, and I, I could not have loved it more. But he suggested, uh, since the bad guy is a scarecrow and it's in a kind of haunted theater, you know, everywhere you feel like it, throw in some crows flying around in, nice. inside the theater. And at first I thought, oh, God, you know, again, trying to work quickly. Here's one more thing I got to do. But then as I started to add the crows, I realized every, every time you add a crow to one of these pages, one of these panels, it makes it so much better <laughs> to the point where on the very last page, I added a gratuitous crow that was not asked for in the script and really had no business being there. But it's like, man, I'm having so much fun drawing these crows. You know, let's, uh, and the, the last page needed something. So I threw in one big kind of close up of a crow. That's fun. Um, and I actually met the writer at Baltimore Comic Con and I told him this story was in the book uh, and he was really happy about it. He was a real nice guy and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say I don't remember his name, but uh, he was, uh, uh, I mean, he David loved Vaughn. Yeah. David David, Vaughn. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Really nice guy. Anyway, let's go yeah. on to the next one. Terrific. I should also mention that um, the editor asked me to do this uh, in an email. He said, Hey, Kevin, cause I just done that uh, Hulk, uh, Immortal Hulk variant cover for Declan Shalvey's book. And he sent me a note. He said, hey, do you want to draw a 10-page uh, Immortal Hulk story? It takes place in a small Kansas town. And I wrote back to him and I said, you know where I live, don't you? No, where do you live? I live in a small Kansas town. Well, then you got to do this story. This is perfect. So, And that was just the beginning of happy little accidents that happened all the way through the story, which is why, of especially of all the interior things I've done, in the last, let's say, 10 years or so, this really is one of my favorites because all these accidents worked in our favor over and over again. It was, it was, a, it was a real trip. I loved it. Oh, that's great. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah, I have a death scene here. Um, didn't change too much from the pencils to the inks, but I, I worked on the layouts for this uh, I put a lot of time working on the layouts for this, uh, just just showing him, you know, because because the the premise of Immortal Hulk is Bruce Banner dies, and that's when he becomes the Hulk. He doesn't get angry and turn into Hulk; he gets killed, and then turns into the Hulk. So um, he's tortured to the point where he has a heart attack and dies, and and uh, and then we have a dancing scarecrow in that last panel, which again was. You know, I, I would have thought it would be very difficult to do. It was very easy to do, and I'm, you know, I'm very proud of his his dance moves there. <laughs> what, uh, it, you know, what what I really yeah. like. Sorry to interrupt, but um, in that middle tier, the storytelling, you know, at the progression is just beautiful. Yeah, it's because it, it it I I stretched it out a bit and added some panels because it just mm -hmm. you know. The, the character's dying. You, you want to kind of play it up a little bit. So, it, Honestly, it's almost Krigstein-esque. Um, yeah, he kind of invented that, uh, that technique, which we're still just all ripping off left and right. Um, yeah, I, I, you, weren't, you didn't rip that off. I mean, you... Well, were, but I mean, he's, he... I, I do. I, I think he... I think he was the first guy to do that. Maybe, maybe Kurtzman, but yeah, I think it was Kriegstein. You know, Master Race. He 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 gave us all those techniques that we're we're still using to this day. I also love the the top uh, right panel with the crows pulling on that dead guy's ear. <laughs> Again, those the crows were just too much fun to draw. They were they were always good. Kevin, can you answer that last question? Uh, where was it? It was published in. Um, it's a. Immortal Hulk one shot. It's called Time of Monsters, I believe. Immortal Hulk number one, Time of Monsters, and it's the backup. There's a there's a longer lead story, um, so it's a little little hard to find. But it's uh, it's a ten page backup. But it is. It's we got to do the coloring, got to do the hand lettering, and again had a yes. terrific script to work with that was just tailor made for me. All right, let's go on to the next one. So, spoiler alert, um, 
most of the, the not most of the the first few pages of the story are in sepia tone, and then when he turns, when Bruce Banner dies, and we see the Hulk, we the first color we true color we see in the story are his uh, his little green toes, and then and then, a la Wizard of Oz, everything is in color from then on. Yeah, but is it really? The Wizard of Oz, because the Wizard of Oz didn't do it in sepia. It's a matter of life and death that did it in sepia and then went to color. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being oh. a joke. No, the Wizard of Oz did do it in sepia. But did I, they? You know, I thought it was just I, black and white. I think so. No, if you, that scene where you see Dorothy from behind as she opens the door, that's, that's really sepia. It's not, it's not really black and white. You, you've um, seen Matter of Life and Death, right? I have. It's been, I, I've seen The Wizard of Oz more recently, but yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's a beautiful movie. I love that that's, movie. That's my. I love Kim, Kim Hunter I, oh. in everything she ever did. You know, she's oh, just right. fantastic. I watched, sorry to get off track here, but The Seventh Victim, you know, one of the great Val Luton movies. I watched it again the other night, and I got, it's like her, her debut. In films, and she's fantastic. You know who else is? I love she's so much. I love, her, I love her in in all of her stuff. But I I was watching again last night, um, the best years of our lives, and Teresa I Wright. Too. I, last night, I said to Deanne because I had a drink. Sorry to reveal this in, these intimate details. I had a drink last night, and Deanne was my wife was half asleep, and I said I should not watch this when I'm drinking. Because I cry even more. Every my, scene of that movie makes me weep. I should not wife, watch that movie. My wife was laughing at me, and she just like, like she's she was like crocheting something, and she didn't even look up, and she just went, "You're crying, aren't you?" <laughs> but wait, that's Teresa Wright. Yes. No, I was just saying. You know, I was just saying. I oh. another actress who I love because yes. if you think about it. And, and I'm sure that everybody's really interested in hearing this who's want to see this book. Okay. But if you think about it, Teresa Wright had a string of movies in the 1940s unlike any other actress. I mean, it's fantastic. You know, I mean, forget about things like The Little Foxes, which is fine, but then you have Mrs. Miniver, Best Years of Our Lives, The um, Shadow Friday, of a Doubt. Shadow of a Doubt. That's. Maybe Arguably my... Hitchcock's greatest movie, which I... is saying a lot. I'd get into a lot of arguments with that, but I love that I so much. I agree. And then, of course, um, 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 Pride of the Yankees, too. Yeah, I just, yes. yeah. Yeah. Anyway. She was fantastic. Have you ever read that, uh, that Hitchcock uh, the book Truffaut. with the Truffaut book? Yeah. Where they talk about Teresa Wright. And oh, yeah. I guess it sounds a little sexist, but, but Hitchcock was talking about he he loved working with her loved the way she moved yeah she just she's just magical um so anyway back to the book anyway back <laughs> to uh back to comics um yeah but, so the big uh, you, you, i think you could kind of see a little mike mignola inspiration here in the the shadows on the hulk you know sure. i wanted him to be big and scary um so he's you know Mike would have done him as three, well, he, he would have done like nine tenths shadow with one one thin rim light on him. I, I did him about three fourths shadow, but uh, but the inspiration I think is obvious there. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. I, I didn't notice it before, but I can see it. And of course the, others, the other similarity is uh, no feet. But anyway, let's go to the next one. I tried desperately to get home sweet because it's in a theater. So the, 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 those rows of seats got in the way every time, almost every time I finally got his, his feet in a little bit later. That's a, you know, that's a real thing that, oh, I know. but you tell I, young I, artists, if, if you do a layout, you know, <laughs> you have one panel where you can see a character's feet, you know, you want to pull back that much or otherwise you're not really doing your job correctly. So. I, I really, on this page, I love the way you're breaking uh, the panel borders, um, you know, on the middle panel and the bottom left. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, that big Hulk arm. 
arm at the bottom. That's, that's crazy. But that's what's fun about drawing the Hulk is, you know, he's got big monster proportions and, and you can kind of cheat on the anatomy a little bit, you know, because he's, again, he's a big monster. Um, but uh, you can see a little editorial uh, change there in that last panel where they, they didn't, they thought it was a little misleading. They wanted to make it clear that uh, what was going on. So we added a little little balloon there. But uh, I was happy with the flow there where the Hulk is really pointing at the next thing you're supposed to read. Uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it moves well, but whatever. Yeah, that, that's weird that they asked you to do that because it's so unnecessary. But anyway. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go on it, to the next. It didn't make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. I love this page. Yeah, the he gets stabbed with a big pitchfork and then breaks the scarecrow's arm. Yeah. Um, he might not be as monstrous looking as the other artists drawing the Immortal Hulk, but uh, yeah, they again they let me they let me do it my way, and I was I was. Uh, Happy with the results. Well, his, his head is closer to Karloff than uh, typical Hulk stuff. Which I feel like that's traditional. That's how Kirby first drew him. He, he looks, he, it's such a Karloff face on that first cover so, that Kirby did. Yeah. All right. And now the next one. I think Gwen fell asleep. She's bored. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Now here's where here's where I really appreciate getting to do my own lettering because that sound effect on that first panel is is really important. Um, and then the next panel is a bit of sorry. We're, I'm I'm talking way too much about this, but it's it really is one of my favorite recent jobs. Uh, the next panel, I didn't think we'd. I'm not sure if we pulled it off. I did the best I could. It was a real challenge because the idea is he's silhouetted and then one of the crows is positioned just right to sort of suggest a witch's hat. Um, as oh, he makes, yeah. He's, yeah, he says something about uh, uh, a scarecrow should have the brains not to mess with someone green skinned and wicked. So one of the most blatant of the uh, Wizard of Oz references there. As the tables are turned, and uh, I, the, I uh, completely did not get that. Yeah, it's I, you know once you know it's there, you see it. If you you know, it, it, whatever. No, um, it's, it's that's really that's a a cool bit of insight. Thank you. All right, yeah. and let's go to page nine. I love yeah. small Hulk face. You know, that's just awesome. <laughs> Uh, in the first panel, yeah, we finally see his feet. Then in the no, uh, no, in the middle. Oh, oh, with the yeah, that kind of smirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like, I, you know, I think the whole page is beautiful, but that that one panel just really stands out to me. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, next one. Last page. Yeah, and there's the there is the gratuitous appearance by uh, by one of the crows. And again, I, I penciled that in there, just thinking it needed something, and I was having so much fun drawing the crows. And I thought, well, here's a good chance to kind of come in close on it because you know you're working in pen and ink. Crows are great because you got those shiny black feathers and lots of shadows. And and and. I'm actually drawing ravens there, by the way. It's a bit of a cheat because ravens are bigger, a little more scruffy, but they're cooler looking than crows. And they're, you know, they're close enough. But, but uh, I, yeah, I, really, they, I really like that, you know, you have him up there leaning forward at the end of the story. It's, you know, you'd almost yeah. call it a cross up. Sorry. That's, yeah. Another of those famous Scott Dream Beer dad jokes. Um, bad times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but and then obviously if you're if you've been reading the story you get you know the the final dialogue balloon is the final uh wizard of oz reference yeah and, 
Anyway, let's go on to uh, uh, now we're coming to uh, the Man Thing graphic novel. And uh, on the left is the cover, which has been shrunk down. The rest of the story is all uh, at, at full size. So this story has a long history. Yeah, sure does. <laughs> you want to talk about it or? Um, well, it was, yeah, because it, it, a, a big chunk of it involves you. Hillary. It, it was, oh, hey, Hillary. Um, it, 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 you know a lot of artists. You know that a lot of artists have these, these stories that, that stall out and they, they never get published or never get finished. And it looked for a long time this was going to be mine. But um, it took so long. I, I'm not, I, I've never had any lessons in painting. So I tried a lot of different things, watercolor and colored pencils and everything I could think of. Um, so I did so many versions of that first splash. Um, until I finally got one that I thought worked. Oh, that's right. You did and, like five versions of that, right? Oh, at least one. When I finally felt like, okay, now I got it. And I sent it into the Marvel and I said, okay, can you, you know, I wanted, since we didn't have computers and color scanners and stuff like that. I wanted to have the pages all together in the studio to, to refer to as I worked on new pages. So I sent it in to Marvel. They sent it back to me. Unfortunately, let's say five years earlier, I had moved and they sent it back to that old address. So that that was lost. Oh. So I had to when I finally thought I'd gotten it nailed down, I had to paint it again. So, you know, all of the happy accidents on that Hulk story, man thing had everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. It dragged on to where I, you know, I. I had a wife and a family and I could barely support them. These pages were taking so long. You stepped in, bought the pages. So I had a little stipend on top of the page rate to, to get me through the end. But it, it, uh, it dragged on and on for years. So, Well, I, I think, I think the first 48 or 50 pages and the cover were all completed more than 30 years ago and then you've wrapped it up you know in the early 2000s but anyway but let's uh okay. let's start taking a look through because i i love this work and i love the colors they're so vibrant and just you know the only word is really pretty you know it's just great stuff <laughs> yeah it was my and, idea to do it painted and, and that's so i blame myself because it you know, i could have done it with pen and ink like a regular comic but that was a it's a story in the swamp at night. It's like, man, you, you can only do so much with pen and ink. You really need, you know, you need fog and, and, and thick air and all the kinds of things you can suggest with paint that you can't do with pen and ink. Well, I, I love this story. But anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's go on to the next one. And this yeah. I decided to use as the variant cover um, just because, you know, you know, we already had the um, uh, the Alpha Flight piece, the more traditional piece, and I thought this would be appropriate for the signed and numbered version. And then, by the way, Steve Gerber wrote this story. And uh, since the lettering was done on an overlay, uh, I decided, and you can read it if you want to in the, uh, comic that came out a number of years ago. Um, rather than the Marvel graphic novel, it was printed as a three-issue comic. But um, um, uh, uh, but here I decided, let's see all the art. So, and that that bottom right panel, I you know, such emotion in that in that character's face with the uh, with the stars. Yeah, he's yeah. hit on the head. So yeah, he's he's. He's tortured by these uh, cartoon characters, so that's the first sign we get that uh, um, <laughs> yeah, these two-dimensional animated uh, symbols are, are uh, what do you think? 
Uh, Fred, uh, that'll Fred's question. The signed in number, it'll go um, uh, on the IDW site uh, around the time the book is released. Uh, there'll be uh, an announcement. All right, let's go to the next one. And here are the cartoon characters you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And I love in the next page how you, you know, have those white eyes for man thing, you know, almost making him feel like a cartoon character also. Yeah, because yeah, that's a, it's a thing. And he's not really supposed to show emotion, or I guess he is, what am I saying? He, Man Thing's tricky. He's not like Swamp Thing, you know, who has a has a personality and all that. But yeah, you, you at least wanted to show that he's being tortured by these uh, by these images or whatever. So yeah, I did want him to look startled as he runs away. But um, yeah, I guess it worked. Let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. You know, just the rendering is so pretty on these pages. Just really. You know, I mean, even even something like that hand in the middle of the panel on the right, you know, just the, the level of work you put into there, just really nice. Oh, and also, um, am I right? I don't remember. I, I could just go back and have a look. But the um, didn't you put a film on, on the tree character? Yeah, it's color film uh, that's that's tacked down um the for the the, the green leaves is uh is colored film she's painted well i think it might, it might even be film over paint you know like i said i was trying everything i i could get my hands on so um yeah there's there's combinations i mean it's real it, it really is mixed media throughout especially these first pages while i'm or I'm experimenting with, with everything I can get my hands on. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Just nice stuff. Okay, why don't we go to the next? And again, stop me if you want to say anything about any particular pages. Okay. Did you have a model for the woman here? No, which uh, the, it's why she's kind of inconsistent. But, you know, I basically wanted an older version, like a middle-aged version of the, uh, the character as she appeared in the original story. Um, this is a sequel to one of, the, one of the comics that Gerber and Mike Plug did back in the 70s. So, okay. Um, Let's go on to the next. Yeah. And this okay, was actually, yeah, yeah. You, you also use this as a change of address card, right? Am I right? Uh, no, I didn't use this, but yeah, you're saying I did a drawing like of this. my wife. Yeah, of my wife and me. Yeah, very much like this a little pen and ink drawing. Yeah, and, and you know, the wife in this is pregnant and and i think that was the joke with the change of address is i had a, a word balloon coming from my wife's belly because we were expecting our first child at the time all right and then let's go to the next yeah so the, this main character is being fired uh, he's working for uh He's writing for animation. So I think some of this might be autobiographical on Gerber's part. You never know. I'm sure it is. Okay, let's go to the next. All right, and the next. Oh, that that, that landline going through the window, that dates it, doesn't it? Uh, oh, right, 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 right. You know what yeah, I really love? You know what I really love on this sequence on that the first page in the middle tier on the right I love that you put a shadow there underneath the smoke <laughs> the smoke yeah well because the cartoon characters are an important part of the story it was a great chance for me to you know 
to venture to, to to do cartooning where it seemed appropriate. So, um, yeah, things like that. It it just worked, you know, because you don't have movement. You want to show a vehicle driving away from you. So that's that's when the cartoon stuff really comes in handy. Um, but th yeah, thanks for noticing that. I like it too. Anyway, let's go to the next. Two title pages. Or no, the, I guess the one on the right is a, is a chapter title page. Um, okay. And then let's go to the next. And the next. <laughs> Crazy stuff. I think that was, I think that grotesque long tongue, I think Gerber had that in the script. That just doesn't, I mean, I, I've added enough weird stuff, but I don't think that was me. I think that was Gerber. All right, let's go to the next. <laughs> A little foreshadowing. <laughs> and more cartoony. Yeah, more cartoony stuff with the opening the door and hitting the guy in the head. Yeah. All right, and let's go to the next. Is another one, another example of a film on top of that character. Right, right. Yeah. Nice stuff. All right, next one. <laughs> yeah. uh, cartoon violence, I guess you'd call it. Um, yeah, grotesque cartoon violence. Um, you know, this actually... I don't know if you watched the boys TV show. There um, was there was one episode where a character has these like cartoon character demons. And I I never made that connection before, but it, it really does remind me of this. Yeah. Do you, did you see it? I did not. Sorry. No. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I'm just I'm just uh you know, I, I was just wondering if I went too far or if this is how that should have been drawn. I don't know. It's too late to, to question it now. But, wow, that's he's pretty, he's pretty awful. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, out. Yeah. I'm sure it was in the script. Well, you know, and yeah. his leg is being sawed off, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny. not at all timid. All right, let's go to the next one. Nice pages. I, again, I, you know, the emotion that you show in that bottom right panel uh, with man thing, you know, it's just, you know, his eyes just, you know, it looks like a, a sad dog, you know, the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next. Yeah, and we're on the. This is Star Trek uh, scene here. What do you mean? He's wearing a, a crescent moon. That's not a, an Enterprise. Okay, sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. All right, the next one. <laughs> more, more cartoon blood. Yep. Yep. Let's go to the next. Nice progression on the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the next. Yeah, now our, our Rambo scene. All right, let's go to the next one. And the next.
<laughs> and then slap. That's funny. And then the next. Actually, wait, wait. Go back to that other one. You know, one thing that I really like about your work, Kevin, is that you draw real people. I mean, you know, the woman in the in the one piece. I don't, I'm not sure if that's a bathing suit or what, but you know, she's got a realistic figure. You know, which is very, very rare in comics. Well, anyway. it, but again, this, we're supposed to be seeing these characters. I don't know, 20 years after they appeared in the original. Um, the original story um so yeah i it wouldn't make sense to uh to make her look like she was 18. um yeah she had to she had to look uh like she was in her early middle age years um, yeah it's not so much the age though it's, it's just the the way you interpret yeah, woman yeah but yeah. anyway Okay. But yeah, I think I think this this time the story required that that you know that it was done for a reason, not just because I was trying to be realistic, just because that's that's what the story required. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. All right, I really like this sequence, you know, in the bottom right, which leads into the next page, which is just an awesome page. Let's move on to that one. <laughs> yeah, so he's he's turning into uh, a, a version of the Hulk, but I'm 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 trying to do a Lou Ferrigno TV Hulk, not the comic book Hulk. Sure, um, which is why he looks I mean, with with uh, with his character Brian with, with Brian's face. Um, yeah. All right, let's go to the next. And that's yeah, the double a spread. double page spread. Yeah. yeah. You know, the the creepiness of this with the mouth sewn shut. <laughs> yeah, that was that was uh, specifically in Gerber's script. I think a lot of those things are, but but how are they were big he didn't ask for them in order. He just asked, it was basically a list of things and, and asked me to kind of tie them together um, as best I could, which is. I like I the, uh, I like the little circles in the top left. Uh, uh, splashing through the swamp water that, uh, yeah. 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 All right. Uh, let's go on to the next. Yeah, nice perspective. All right, let's go on to the next. I think that might be correct. Okay, these are now moving forward in time from the late eighties, early nineties, or late late eighties to um, like two thousand six, seven, eight when you finished it up. I mean, this, you know, you can see the style is different. I mean, obviously you're trying to keep to the style, but you're a different artist when you did these. Am I, am I right that this is where it starts? So, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, uh, like the page on the left might have been partly f finished, you know, but then there's a gap, you know, many, many years before I picked it up again and finished it. So it's a, it's probably a combination. All right, let's go on to the They all would have been penciled. Everything was penciled uh, years earlier, but then the actual painting would have been done later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, different different uh, technique, you know, similar. Right. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Actually, the, the, uh, the bottom right panel, that shot of man thing, was one of the first things I painted. Um, so again, it's a, it's a combination, but, but I remember grabbing that one and thinking, okay, let's, let's try some markers, some watercolor, some gouache. Um, um, so yeah, it's, it's one of the first things I painted. Okay. Out of right, sequence. Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> Again, really cool stuff. Yeah, I can definitely tell that these were done later. 
Uh, I'm not I'm not struggling with the technique as much as I was earlier. It's uh, yeah. First appearance of Groot, right? No kidding. <laughs> right, right. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, that that page on the right is just so much fun. You know, you look at the expression on the asparagus guy or whatever he is. <laughs> yeah, that's, Min, that's Minnie the tree who is his companion until you know and she uh, she takes she takes over and and of course it's a play on, you know, it's his mind. Mindy is his mind attacking him essentially. Yeah. But yeah, the nose sticking the, the nose, the long nose uh, breaking the panel border. That's yeah. that's fun. All right, then let's go to the next one. Yeah, it's fun. It's funny because, you know, these, even the layouts have sort of changed a little bit from the older stuff to the newer stuff now that I'm really looking well, at Well, they it. shouldn't. They shouldn't because those, these were all laid out and even penciled back yeah. uh, when I did the original pages. Well, what the hell do I know? <laughs> well, but, but I mean, it may, may have changed for other reasons, but it wasn't because of, mm. of uh, time passing. Right. It's great stuff, though. You know, again, you know, the uh, the top two panels on the right, you know, where they where you, br you know, instead of doing one panel, you did it two with the same image, which I really, really dig. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's go to the next one. And there's the last page. Right. Nothing like a happy ending. <laughs> yeah yeah and again just like with the death of uh bruce banner and the and the, the hulk story i did my best to slow down you know to to give van thing this slow exit because it just seemed it seemed too abrupt an ending to me um it's still pretty abrupt but um i tried to tried to slow it down as much as i could you know, I have a question for you, and it's funny. It didn't occur to me before. What was the what was your thought process, if you remember, in the top two panels there? Why break that instead of oh. having one? Well, if you remember the layouts we talked about earlier, because that second one is where we have the sound. It's just basically a, a base for the big blam sound effect as the gunshot. Right, right, right. right so we right. have the first panel, she's she's reacting in horror, and then boom, is the gunshot. Got yeah, it. that's okay. that's one place where not having the lettering makes a big difference because you, you don't get that effect. Yeah, right. otherwise it just looks like it's a totally arbitrary uh, division of a panel. It could just be one. But, um, right. And I guess it still could have been, but um, I don't know. I was thinking about timing and trying to slow it down a little. Sure. And then... Um... Um, the page on the right is the first page of another short story, uh, and we're going to end with two short stories, so we can uh, start going through those. Okay. Um, and that's yeah. just like a typical house that you draw, like from Kansas. It is actually. It's a. Uh, it's only about a block, block and a half from here. It's a. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful Queen Anne. I think is the name for the architecture. My uh, my physicians house um here in sterling it's a it's a real it's a real uh did you show that architectural that? masterpiece i did yeah i gave him a copy of the book and he was uh he was very happy to see uh to see his home nice the, the comic yeah all right let's move on to the next one R written by jeff parker by the way who, who was a lot of fun to work with and gave me lots of fun stuff to draw in this and another really good guy Absolutely. A talented, good guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a theme here. Another story has a combination of, quote, realism and cartoony effects. Um, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have Hank see, he's not seeing stars when the eight ball hits him in the side of the head, but I probably could have. All right, let's go to the next. <laughs> yeah, 
Is that an established character? Because he he reminds me of Gollum from uh, the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, no, I think I think he's new here in this. Yeah, he's a little uh, he's a little gremlin guy. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next. And then on the left is the last page. On the right uh, is the first page of the last story, last complete story. Um, unfortunately, that one doesn't have any lettering on it. <coughs> Was that a silence? Right. Or, um, I'm, I'm yeah. just, okay. With uh, yeah, the, I don't remember the... I don't remember the dialogue or narration or whatever, but yeah, hopefully you can follow the story even without the uh, the balloons. Let, let's go to the next next spread. Written by Jason Aaron during his run on Doctor Strange. And then let's go to the next. And that that does it except for the bio page on the next page that Kevin drew a uh, a self portrait of himself winking winking yeah but anyway there we have it we can uh, close oh, the I'm sorry what'd you say oh i was just talking to gwen you can close the okay. uh, uh, screen in there but um Anyway, uh, Kev, any uh, any final thoughts on uh, the book or on uh, anything else? No, um, that was fun. I can't wait to see the the actual physical book. Um, but it looks like a looks like a nice kind of retrospective going back. Well, some of that earlier stuff is I think forty years ago this month. So. Yeah. Yeah, forty years in the making. Well, that's um, funny. Yeah, and uh, um, and then you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll do uh, another artist edition of more of your work at some point in the future. But only time. As I can say, we, uh, it's probably too late to label this volume one. But you know, I'm still working. We could uh, we could do another another one uh, if you just give me enough time to. To, uh, fill up a few more pages. We'll do another one sometime. I'd love to. What, what, are, you, what are you working on right now, by the way, so people can uh, go and check it out? Um, covers mostly. I'm making a few uh, a few more Joe Casada covers now that he's a freelancer. Um, did a cover for this new DC book. Um based on the, the old uh, Batman, Batman anim, animated uh, adventures. Um, so drawing in that, again, kind of cartoony style for that cover. Um, doing another Overstreet cover inspired by a Kirby Avengers cover this time. I did that one inspired by Neil Adams' Defenders cover a couple of years ago. This one will be uh, based on I think Avengers 3. With the Hulk, God, this is the theme today. It's the Hulk, um, the Hulk and the Submariner um, um, facing off with the uh, the Avengers. That's what I'm working on right right at this moment. Cool, that sounds good. I'll look forward to that. But um, anyway, we should probably. Uh, God, we're at the two hour mark. Pretty much, we should let uh, people get Holy uh, cow. this stuff on on uh, comic art fans. But um, yeah, I have a feeling it's just you and me now. Everyone else has we won the war of attrition. Everyone else has dropped off. I'm sure, but that was fun. well. I, I l luckily, it. luckily, we enjoy talking to each other. I don't know if people enjoy yeah. listening. Yeah, to us, but... yeah, and you know, blame part of that on uh, Teresa Wright and that little uh, that little uh, segue into or uh, tangent into. But black people white movies, need but, to know about that stuff. Yeah, if we don't educate them, they won't know about these things. Yeah. Like, like, okay, I'm just th I'll just throw this out. What's the greatest comic cover from the 1970s? <laughs> we we settled this. You and I 
took a vote and and it was and unanimous the, yes. it was unanimous there it, yeah it's it's wonder woman 99 199 199 right right, Jeff. right just before 200 yeah 199 the uh the gothic uh terror uh painted by jeffrey Catherine jones and it's just that that Someone has that original, a scan of that original showed up not long ago, and it's stunningly beautiful. It's, I, it's I know amazing. the guy who owns it now. And, uh, you know, I, I was going to buy that at Sotheby's years and years ago, but I couldn't afford it because I had already bought, I spent all my money on buying um, uh, that Macro Boy Master cover. Which, oh. Yeah, yeah. See that? Yeah, I. Who, who can blame you? You, you, you know, you gave up one masterpiece for another. So, yeah, you can't have all of them, Scott. Well, I, I don't have very many anymore at all because you know I had to pay for this house. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah. Anyway, well, Kev, um, seriously, thanks very much. And uh, as soon as sure. I get a um, advanced copy of the book, I'll send it to you. Terrific. Looking forward to it. Yeah, probably in the next month or two. But anyway. Oh, anyway. very good. All right. Terrific. Well, then right. Uh, I think that's it. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks for hanging in there. Sorry we kept you so long. <laughs> Till next time. Now, how do we get off here? Do I click on something or?